working on experiments that we hadn't even thought of 10 years ago, even five years ago. Graphene throws up all sorts of new challenges for completely new types of, of science to do. It's hard to think of another type of material in which you would have those sort of challenges thrown up on a, a weekly, almost daily basis. That's what's really exciting about graphene. Graphene was first isolated and many of its properties were first identified by scientists working in the physics department at Manchester from 2004 onwards. What's happened over the last decade is that there's been a big expansion of graphene work into my own department, which is chemistry, into material science, into the life sciences and into engineering. Really, I think the advantage we have in Manchester is that we have a lot of fundamental expertise from the physics department in graphene, but we're, we've got a kind of seamless transition of graphene from its very fundamental properties to the applications which are being explored. In, in the field of energy storage in particular, I think everybody knows that there's a problem with batteries. Why is graphene interesting for batteries and the other type of energy storage device based on electrochemistry, which are things called supercapacitors? An electrode material has to conduct electricity, but it should also be light, and energy is stored basically as a function of the, of the volume or the area of the device. So you want a high surface, high volume, light, stable, conducting material. And the advantage of graphene is that it basically ticks all those boxes. It's a material which people hadn't conceived or had only theoretically conceived, but didn't think could exist more than 10 years ago. It's difficult to get energy in and out of batteries quickly, so for your initial burst of acceleration, if you had, for example, an electric Ferrari, then how would you get your, your 0 to 60 in, in under a second? It's hard to imagine that you could get that from a battery. A supercapacitor would be the way to get that kick of energy you need to accelerate quickly. We could have flexible power storage, we could have batteries and supercapacitors that are bendable and therefore, because graphene doesn't break, or, or it's very hard to break graphene, and therefore could be sewn into, for example, fabric. So you could store the energy within, or have the energy storage device sewn into your clothes, where you could have some graphene-based energy storage device that might even be in fact, effectively sewn into somebody's skin. You can imagine that's, that's science fiction, but I can't see why that wouldn't happen in the future. Because we're relying more and more on re renewable energy, from wind, from the tide, from the sun, then we need ways of storing that energy. And how do you store that energy? Well, essentially, giant banks of batteries and supercapacitors are feasible ways of storing that energy, but we need to improve the technology, and graphene can really make a difference there.